What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video I'm going to do a couple of examples of using the precise definition of the limit to prove that a limit exists. So I've made a video in the past sort of explaining this definition of the limit. So if you're unfamiliar with this definition, go ahead and click right above and check that video out. Refresh yourself. It's important that you understand that definition in order for these examples to make sense. But this video, we're just going to look at a couple of examples of using linear functions. So these tend to be the simplest functions to deal with when we're using this precise definition. And then my next video, we'll do some quadratic functions, which are a little bit more complicated. So let's go ahead and start with this first example. We're going to prove that the limit of 3x minus 2 as x approaches 2 equals 4. Okay, so how we start is we refer to the definition of the limit, which says that for each epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta. So that for each epsilon part is important because it tells us that our epsilon needs to be an arbitrary real number greater than 0. So that's our first step is let epsilon be greater than zero. From here, there exists a delta greater than zero such that, etc., etc., right? So since that delta is existence, we can choose our delta. And just to be clear, our delta is typically not a real number like five or two or something like that. Our delta usually depends on epsilon. It's an expression in terms of epsilon, right? And the reason being, if you understand that definition, as our epsilon changes, our delta needs to change as well. I sort of explain that in my other video where I draw a picture, right? But the way I sort of think of this is you give me an epsilon and I'll give you a delta. And for any epsilon you give me, I can give you a delta that works, right? That's sort of how I think of it informally, okay? So we're going to choose this delta, which we don't know yet. But once we choose that delta, we're going to assume right suppose remember what's the rest of our definition if zero less than i call this whole thing the delta expression that's just kind of what i call it but it's this x minus a or x minus c whatever letter you call this guy here so in this case x minus two is less than delta right so we're going to assume this and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that f of x minus l expression and see if we can use this as assumption to show that that absolute value of f of x minus l is, in fact, less than epsilon. So from here, we're going to go then. And our f of x in this case is 3x minus 2, right? That's the function we're dealing with. So I'll put it in parentheses just to get in a good habit of using parentheses. Minus l, which is 4. As you can see in this case, we don't need the parentheses, but it's a good habit. So we want to take this expression and manipulate it and not assume anything we shouldn't be assuming. Just use this assumption here to show that this is less than epsilon. So that's our goal is to show that this is less than epsilon. Okay, And there is some scratch work involved in finding this delta, but this is sort of the general way I outline these proofs, especially for linear functions, and it works really well, is set everything up do the scratch work, find the delta, go back, put the delta here, erase this, put the delta here, and then the rest of it just kind of falls out. And I think you'll see what I mean. Hopefully you'll like this method. This is slightly different than what I did with the example I showed in my other video. And that's the cool thing about making these videos is sometimes I go back and watch and I think, why did I do it that way? This way is so much easier, right? Which I guess shows that my, you know, mathematical thinking is developing or changing. I don't know. But anyway, Let's see how we continue from here. We can simplify this, right? This equals 3x minus 6, okay? And again, we're not using any assumptions yet. We're just using basic algebra. We combine these two like terms, 3x minus 6. Now, typically what we want to do is we want to somehow factor out this absolute value of x minus 2 expression because this is what we can control the size of, right? We can make this as small as we want. So we can factor out a three from here, and I'll keep it in the absolute value for now. We can factor out a three, and we're left with x minus two, right? So this is actually equal, whoops, there we go. This is equal, right? All I did was I factored the three out, and now I can actually take this outside of the absolute value. If this were negative, I would have to make it positive, right? Which is fine, but in this case, I can actually just take it out, and we have three times the absolute value of x minus 2. 
And now remember, this expression here is what I control the size of, right? And this whole thing, f of x minus l, is what I want to be less than epsilon, which is actually equal to this, right? So this is what I want to be less than epsilon. So this is kind of where the scratch work comes into play. How can I ensure that this is less than epsilon using this assumption? Well, I know that, let's see, I'll need my eraser here for a second. Let's maybe get rid of this for a second because I know that this x minus two is less than delta. So that means that three times x minus two is less than three times delta, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Since this is less than delta, three times this is less than three times delta, right? So if I can ensure that three times delta equals epsilon, then I've shown that this is less than epsilon. And since this expression is the same thing as the f of x minus l, just manipulated a little, I have exactly the result I want. So how can I ensure that three times delta equals epsilon? Well, I can simply just solve for delta, right? And what I get is delta equals epsilon over three, and let's see if this works as a valid choice for delta. So epsilon over three. Oh wow, that's kind of cool that that's like symmetric. Epsilon over three. You can rotate it 180 degrees and it's the same thing, kind of cool. Anyway, let's see if this works. So this was sort of our scratch work toward the end, but what I like about this is I had already outlined it. So really I'm not gonna have to change much for the proof to be done, right? because I have let epsilon be greater than zero, choose this as my delta, suppose that this is less than delta, all that's legit, and then I'm gonna consider this f of x minus l expression and show that it is less than epsilon, right? And in fact, I think all I really need to do is go back here and start there, because I know that this absolute value of x minus two is less than epsilon over three. I can say that this is less than three times epsilon over three, which equals epsilon. And I think that's it for the proof, right? Because this is my f of x minus l expression. I've shown that it's less than epsilon, which is exactly what I wanted to show, and therefore we're done. So hopefully you like this method. This is something that, you know, this is how I would do one of these proofs today, as opposed to when I made that video in the past. So a little bit different. But I like this because you can outline it, you can find the delta, and you don't have to go and erase everything and rewrite the proof, right? If you sort of are able to plan ahead. So let me know what y'all think of this. Next, I'm gonna do an example of a quadratic function. We're gonna like do something like x squared or x squared minus four or something like that. Then maybe we'll do some radical function, rational function, stuff like that. These examples can get really complicated really quick. So. Try not to do too many of them, but hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like, stay tuned for more. Keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see y'all later.